Hi everyone, uh, this is Rick with the Tractor Channel and I've been wanting to make this video for a long time. I have in a row is some of my excavators and what I wanted to show you and look at on these excavators are these two first ones right here. They call them the Chinese excavators and believe it or not all these are Chinese or Japanese excavators because the only thing they build in the United States anymore is Gale and Manitou. So our politicians have sold all that out to either um, China, Japan, or how they moved all of our jobs across the chain link fence into Mexicali, Mexico for all the auto manufacturing. But these first two are $5,500 and they're roughly 36 inches wide so that blade on the front of there is going to be 36 inches wide but there um, are $5,500 now this is set up in the excavator ISO controls and if you haven't worked on these very much you'll tell people oh you can change these to uh, tobacco settings by just changing the hoses but really you need to leave them in ISO because they don't work very good in the backo setting because the um, valves for the hydraulics feed off the wrong end to do that. But so here, and anyways, here's a $5,500 one, open cabbed. It's got a LED work light on it, a manual um, thumb. Does not, of course, have an angle blade, and it does the undercarriage does not um, come in and out. It's fixed. Okay. Here we actually have a $5,500 enclosed cab model with a manual thumb. Now it's got a LED light on the boom and it's got two LED lights up on the cab. It also is 36 inches wide and also doesn't retract on the uh, tracks. Okay, so if we go inside, I'll just show you what this looks like for the hell of it because I'm going to show you what it looks like in the cat also. But this is not bad guys for $5,500. That's a real door and it shuts real good. It's kind of nice. Um, there's your levers and your controls. It's got plenty of feet room. The windshield does not open in the front. That would definitely be nice if you could figure out. And I think you could figure out a way to, to hinge this open somehow like a regular excavator. The windows on the far side do work. There's a electrical cutoff switch right here. It does have a fan. The fan actually works really well. Back window, of course. So this model right here, would be really nice if you're trying to work in the cold in the rain kind of hot for arizona but you could use it and then you could just if you wanted to you can just unbolt these cabs and, and take them off but it's kind of an interesting machine i i like them i mean i know a lot of people don't like the chinese excavators but i've been buying excavators long enough to know all the excavators are chinese excavators so let's go over here so these the model number on this one is um, Mach Pro MP15. This is a VicSec um, uh, VC13C. Now these are one ton excavators. And I don't want to get you started down the wrong row of comparing it to say like a CAT 301.8. What that 1.8 means is that means that's a 1.8 ton excavator. A metric ton is 22. 2,205 pounds, whereas a regular U.S. ton is 2,000 pounds. So these, most of these Chinese excavators or any excavators like that E35 down there, that's actually an E38, but it's got an E35 label on it, and that's to signify that it's around. A that's actually a little bigger than the three and a half ton, but it signifies it's a three and a half ton excavator, and that's before they change their model numbers. So this one right here. It, it probably weighs 2,000 pounds and the other one over here maybe a hair more with the cab or the same so what what I want everybody to look at here these two are $5,500 okay a cat 301.8 you're looking at about $55,000 and people are like wow no way not $55,000 well actually um, $55,000 and I'm talking brand new. That's actually a really good deal. You might be closer to 60 on that when you go to buy it, or even a little higher than 60. But you know, it's it's not it's not really. I mean, everybody compares them all the time to these one-ton excavators, but 
it's kind of hard to compare them. This one, you know, these weigh a little over 2,000 pounds or under 2,000 pounds, around 2,000 pounds. This one right here is going to weigh in at at least 4,500 pounds. And you get some jumbo guy in there like me, i probably make this thing weigh 5,000 pounds pretty easy. But if we're looking at this machine right here, we got, you know, it's it's just different. It's more refined. It's fr it's a Chinese excavator, guys. I can show you the... Uh, the um placard or the certificate that came with it and they have to tell you where these things are made it's actually a law and sure enough it says it's made in china so but the things that it's going to be a little different here is this one does retract which is kind of nice it's out to 51 inches so that blade right now is in the you know it's folded out on each end so that's 51 inches wide and the tracks are out all the way to 51 inches wide and when it's retracted though, and those blades are folded in on the end, this gets down to 39 inches wide. So that is 39 inches wide. These get down to 36 inches wide. They don't, they don't retract, but they're 36 inches wide, okay? So on here, of course, we got a real hydraulic thumb. We, got, um, we do have uh, auxiliaries up here, like a normal uh, flat face auxiliaries. And they, they even do have those on these, believe it or not. They're, they're tiny hoses and they're not gonna run anything, you know, with, with a lot of um, gallons per minute on your hydraulic. You know, this, this cat over here, I think it runs at 7.8 gallons per minute. Whereas you get into the bigger machines like that Bobcats, um, I think it's 18 gallons per minute on the, uh, on the auxiliary hydraulics out on the end of it. But just to give you a look at what's different, this still, this doesn't have an angled, uh, angled uh, uh, dozer blade um, these systems are nice so we do have I dig in this thing um, this does have your uh, your pivot boom on here so this if you look on the other side here you actually have a cylinder there and you can pivot this boom if you're digging next to a wall or a house or something and these over here these are fixed they don't they don't pivot at all same way with this mock pro it doesn't pivot either but it is pretty tiny where you could just be digging you know next to something so we, we already got a lot of differences when you go into this cab model we have um we have one light on this one too we got a led light on the boom over there we got two led lights on the cab oh major difference led lights on the back there or one led light major difference though this one has awesome air conditioning and tinted windows of course that makes a big difference guys or guys and girls when you tint these windows in these you might think oh i don't want to waste the money but it makes all the difference in the world in these little excavators so if we look in here um it's got a console over there screen it's got your uh, dozer blade now of course the difference in this it's going to have a uh, stick steer which you put it down and you push that yellow button right here you're going to be able to do stick steer which means you don't have to use your levers or your pedals which is kind of nice and of course these windows in the front here you can slide you can unhook this bottom window slide it into the top window and then everything goes up like a skid steer out of your way if you want to keep this window in the open position you can drive it with the door open you can drive it with that window open over there so very nice machine i love this machine has i dig in it also that's the beauty of these i dig depth systems is you can take them from one machine to the other but when you get out and you're digging a pool or you're digging footers house footers setting up a pad you can even have your i dig system work on um sorry I'm wiping the soil off my forehead here it's really hot and humid today but you can even use your i dig systems um but by just switching them from one machine to the other, you just have to have the bracket and the second machine kit. But makes it kind of nice. Makes it a lot um, cheaper to do. Now, this machine versus these on the dozer blade, this one is going to have float, which is really a nice characteristic. So right off the bat, you got the pivoting boom and you got the float system. You do have a hydraulic um, thumb. And over here, now these on the couplers they just come with the pins so you physically had to take these bolts out and knock these pins out 
Um, this one, same way, you gotta knock those pins out over here. Now on the cats, this one does have the quick, um, it's a manual coupler, but you do have a bolt in there, you undo, and then you move that red thing right there, and it's real easy to, the pins actually stay in the buckets, and they're very easy to change. So, you know, 55,000, let's, yeah, we almost can say 60,000, but 55,000 versus 5,500, man, if you got a plumbing company, you're digging some sewers every now and then, not every day, this thing is going to be light, guys. These weigh 2,000 pounds. You could put them in the back of pickup trucks. I've loaded them in back of um, Home Depot flatbed aluminum bed rental trucks. This one right here, like I said, you know, you're know, you up into the 4,500 pounds, maybe more with a tub, tubby guy like me in there. So let's go to this next system right here. Um, and by the way, I, I love all excavators, old ones, new ones, ones that I have to work, ones that I gotta be under for two days, changing apart. I like them all. Love this little machine right here, the cat. Well, I, I like these two for getting where you need to go. That's a, those two are way better than shovels, guys. Way better. Now this cat, I love this thing. I, I can retract that, like I said, at 39 inches, drive through gates. It's a real super workhorse. Those are two, but not as much. Okay, now we're gonna get over to a way more expensive machine. This machine right here, this is a platinum model. Now this is actually a Bobcat. It says E35, but it's actually what they call an E38. They just now changed the model numbers on it before, right after this one was built. But this is actually the E38. And this machine is the platinum model. You can tell when you see these machines and they're black. Now this doesn't have the windows tinted yet. It's about to get the windows tinted, but you can see the black there and it says platinum. There's a lot of things that the platinum includes. It pretty much includes every option that Bobcat has except for the extend a hoe. Now included in the platinum model was this huge um, counterweight in the back. Of course, air conditioning, heating, um, uh, LED lights, uh, front and back on the cab led lights on the uh actual boom itself um of course it pivots there's your pivot pivots a long ways too um big float blade and of course this one which is awesome you see that cylinder over there that is actually an angle blade so and a neat thing too about this machine is it also comes with the exchange so everything inside of this, this button, this this right here, this pin, is what would go in and out from the cab. You push a button in there, it's hydraulic, and the mounts on these are called exchange, and it says that right here, exchange. That's just the shape of the bucket. Now this is not a bucket, of course, on there. That's a, um, a skid steer attachment on, It's you don't see these very often, of course we built it, but this is a, uh, a skid steer fork assembly hooked onto an excavator, and we can turn this thing around too. So sometimes we put welders on them, and the welders will be back here, the super heavy ones, or they can be sticking out the front, because this whole assembly can turn around where the forks are aimed back towards the cab. And one neat thing, now it didn't come with it, but this also has a power tilt that goes on the end down here. And the power tilt versus a power or versus a tilt bucket is amazing. You can dig on the sidewalls. It's not like a full, um, you know, uh, steel wrist that's gonna rotate and tilt. This only only rotates, but I'll, I'll do some videos on it sometime to show you guys, because a lot of times when I'm digging under utilities, it's very nice to be using that. So, sorry about that. Sweat's just running down my eyes again. So, and then we have the, um, what's nice about this, and the same way on the cat, is your, your um, thumb stays connected all the time, but you can switch over to right here to use an auger or something like that on the end of your boom. So, we'll go on the other side here. And this is a real machine, guys. I mean, look at, look at this thumb on this thing. It is just huge. Never has let go of any type of rock that I've ever had on it either. Pretty much as heavy as I've had on it. And of course, that's where it says uh, angle blade right there. And there's our angle blade cylinder. 
that is worth it guys i think it's six seven thousand dollars to add that to machines but it it's very much worth it like i said tinting the windows is awesome the big counterweight that's going to help you in so many places and this machine is awesome inside guys we go in here fully enclosed full air conditioning heat heated seat we don't really need that in arizona uh, two screens. So the one screen is the um, the upgraded Bobcat screen on the on the bottom there. Uh, that's an iDig. This is where you chase your lights for iDig, and that's your iDig system over there, where you can sit and watch your bucket every position your bucket's in. You can watch that. It's not like when you're using a laser on your um, boom section or your dipper section. You don't ever know where that bucket is. With the iDig systems, like I said, you can move it by just getting a bracket kit for the second machine, or it's called a second machine kit. But the beauty of it is, is you know, like me, when I go out and dig footers and stuff, or bait or anything, pools, I just go out, I find my benchmark, um, I bench the system, and boom, I know when I move, every time you move the machine, of course, you gotta re-bench, but it just takes a second to find that laser again. And this one, um, they have the huge laser finders on them from iDig. I'll show you that right here. That'd be this part right here. This is where the laser has to hit this sensor right here. But being such a big sensor, it's so easy to find it versus they used to have little sensors like this. This, this monitors where this dipper is all the time, but the whole sensor that used to pick up the laser in the olden days used to be that size. But this is, like I said, it's an awesome cabin side, great um, Bluetooth radio, air conditioning, and the full works. Okay, so I hope this, I'll go through and I'll do some more videos and stuff too, but what I really wanted to get with this video is I wanted to get, if you're buying an excavator, what do you really have to buy? What do you really need? How much do you really have to spend? And I mentioned earlier, if if you're a homeowner, have a little farm, have a little bit of land, want to dig a ditch, clean out a ditch, something like that, these are going to do it, guys. $5,500. You might be able to find them more. They might be a little less or a little more, but it's an amazing deal. Um, you know, get one, learn with it. You're going to learn about being an excavator. You know, what goes on in excavators pretty quick versus that, you know, versus not having one at all and just jumping right in and buying one. You'll actually know what more you need to buy. But, you know, I I like to tell people what I would do if if I was starting a company. Here's, here's what I would do. I mean, if I didn't have any money, I was trying to start a company, I'd buy one of these. $5,500 machines. I would just start getting odd jobs. You know, I'd maybe let the people know it's going to take me longer. My machine's small. They don't care. They're going to pay you. But if I was really going gun ho I would, I would buy some machine and everybody makes them and this size right here, but it, this is a 1.8 ton. I would buy a 1.8 ton and I would start out with that. Okay. Now the next thing or you could start out the next bigger one too. The next bigger one is I would get a 410 machine. Everybody has a 410 machine. Like I said, this one is pretty much considered a 410 machine because it's actually an E38 because it does, in that platinum model, you also get the 33 horsepower turbocharged uh, diesel engine versus the regular E35 is only gonna have that 24 horsepower diesel engine. So. By the time you get the counterweight, um, all the extra options, the 33 horsepower turbocharged diesel engine, you know, this is pretty much what I would call a 410 machine. And the reason guys have 410 machines is you can trailer them without a CDL. And this this Bobcat right there is, um, uh, I, it's a hair less, I think it's three inches less than um, six feet. Okay, so I think it's around 59 inches. Six feet would be um, 72 inches. So this will easily, with clearance, go through a six foot gate. It's not a lot of clearance, but it will go through a six foot gate. This, you can get that down to just be 39 inches wide. 
and these ones like i said are 36 inches wide these that that um, bucket right there is a 12 inch bucket on that cat and these are 14 inch buckets on these little uh chinese excavators and of course they're sized like if you were to see a 12 inch bucket for the e38 it's a lot bigger bucket all buckets you probably already know this by now are actually sized per the excavator of what they'll hold and stuff you can get a 12 inch bucket for a huge excavator that might be as tall as i am so so anyways man i hope this makes helps you guys make decisions don't let salesmen talk you into something you need to buy if you really don't need that machine you can rent all these machines you can go to home depot rent um the U, what is it, the U-17s or the KO-18s. Um, you can rent uh, Bobcat um, E-10s, Bobcat E-20, Bobcat E-26. Then after that, of course, you're up to the E-35 and E-38. Little larger machines, gonna be a little harder to trailer. And you're gonna need a CDL when you start getting above there to trailer. Now, I one thing that I think is very neat about the caterpillar is i can stick that 301.8 on my trailer and i can stick it on there and i can also put an mt100 and buckets and i'm still not over my 14,000 gvwr on the trailer so that's pretty neat to be able to show up with an excavator and a skid steer not non-cdl on the same trailer that's pretty neat and think about what i just said too everybody because when you start trying to make money that's actually kind of nice to be able to do that now say say you had a little mini skier job to do with the mt100 you wouldn't have to go back and get your um you know your excavator if your next job was an excavator job now i'd put some side ramps on your trailer so you could get your bobcat on and off the front especially if you got a tilt trailer and then so you could be using both machines with the same trailer on the same job if you wanted to or separately you wouldn't have to go back to your yard or your house and change machines unchain this machine chain this machine which takes an hour <laughs> so anyways i'll make more videos my goal here is just help everybody learn about this stuff little background about myself about 42 years ago, this is what I started out with. Um, I'm an old guy, I'm 60 years old. We used to have these things that would show up in our mailbox. We'd work our dead end job and we'd come home and we'd have these things in our mailbox called magazines. Pretty neat, it was a printed copy of basically everything you do on the internet now with websites and YouTube and everything. But we'd work our dead end jobs, we'd come home little bit of energy left and we'd have this brand new magazine in the mailbox called popular mechanics in the back of this magazine you could buy the um, the diagrams and the blueprints of how to build a towable backhoe and this is one of them that I built about 40 years ago and I built over 30 of these things you know this one right here actually has the bucket ripped off you can see it's gone my friend Took him a week and a half digging through rock to rip the bucket off, but it's just kind of um, it's kind of neat how all this got started. But you might say this is where my love for tractors and excavators and backhoes got started. I used to build all my own. I sold a lot of these. Um, was kind of neat because you could tow them where you're going, and then you just crawled around like a crab. And I think the main reason that I'm so much in love with these hydraulic equipment is that um, I had parents that um, basically used me to, uh, like, I can't even say the words because it's, it's not politically correct anymore, but they were some terrible, um, terrible parents. And I dug a lot of, now even with that, this little um, backhoe, towable backhoe that I built here, I, uh, I've, I've dug miles of ditch with these things. Now, now the stuff my parents did to me, of course, was before I was able to build stuff, and they just used me as a shovel. And I dug miles of ditch and fence posts uh, for my parents. I call them that. They really weren't parents. But anyways, I just wanted to show you my background in this, you know, in the machinery business. And um, 
why I have such a love for it, and I'm just glad if I could help anybody with it. Thank you. If you want to see content with the uh, Chinese excavators actually digging, please check the Tractor Channel YouTube channel to see those videos. Thank you.